we are justified in making that particular assertion. Bangalore or Hyderabad and I want to understand from Dr. Amit Mitra how badly are these curbs and outsourcing and this anti-outsourcing wave that seems to be sweeping across America how badly is it impacting Indian business sir? I think we have to remember that much of the outsourcing according to US Chamber of Commerce are gains of the American companies. 74% of the gains of outsourcing go to the American company and the remaining to the outsourcer. Now what is interesting is if some of this outsourcing did not take place that particular co American company will become inefficient and perhaps in competition and will perhaps close down. So you will lose jobs if you don't make yourself efficient using the tool of outsourcing. I'm sure President Obama knows that but there is again, as a President of the United States, he is in a terrible uh, situation with 10% unemployment, massive debt in the economy, and all kinds of economic problems of bailing out and how do you fund this, the huge budget deficits. So when the President sits on that table, naturally there are, as a democracy, there are all kinds of pressures on him. So I would say what is important for us is to repeatedly and consistently explain why outsourcing is critical. The services we provide of $60 billion is critical to the survival of existing jobs. In addition, creation of jobs in United States because of the fact that we use our technological and human capabilities. We have to repeatedly explain this. We have to repeatedly dialogue. Let's remember these are two great friends in the world, United States and India. We can differ with each other, but we have to be cons consistently persuading each other in various ways. Let's remember there are many other things that we have to discuss. Technology transfer, agriculture, education. In the midst of that, we must have a cogent argument, consistent dialogue, so that we can solve this and appreciate each other's problems in a friendly manner. That is the statecraft of okay. the highest order that we need to follow in this case. Mr. Dagger, there are so many compelling arguments that demonstrate that outsourcing is good for American business, that Indian companies are generating jobs in the United States and also if outsourcing were to be stopped, American companies would have to fire more people domestically. Despite that, President Obama has been highly anti-outsourcing in his rhetoric. How do you see the midterm elections impacting uh, his attitude towards outsourcing? Will he become more and more anti-outsourcing now that he's been dropped? Or does the message really show to him that protectionism is not what America is looking for at this time? Yeah, that's a very good question. And I think if you look at it, uh, I think these midterms, uh, midterm elections were uh, to clean house of people in, in the U.S. Congress that were either too inefficient or too stupid to realize that we need job creation in the United States. And if India is, uh, is ready, willing, and able to invest and create jobs in the U.S., again, we should be bending over backwards to get those jobs. Some of that rhetoric that you heard uh, these last couple of months was, uh, you could attribute it to posturing is, in what we call that in the United States, meaning it's, it's just that, it's rhetoric. But when you look at it now, I think President Obama has said uh, yesterday in his speech that uh, he gets the message loud and clear, it's about jobs and they need to focus on creating those jobs. Thankfully, a lot of people in the Congress that, uh, that had other agendas, they're going to be gone in January. They just got voted out. They just lost their jobs. Okay, they're, they're done. So now we get a new crop of people that fully understand we need to create jobs. And I think that you're going to see some movement there. If you took this message, if you took this program right here, right now, into the United States and asked these people, you know, hey, here's an Indian company ready to create jobs, people would be outraged. They'd say, you know, why couldn't this Indian company open up a business here in my small town or my hometown and, and five or ten or, or five hundred of, of my uh, neighbors could be working there. That's how bad it is in the United States right now and, and uh, I, would, I would agree and say that we, not, we need not only a dialogue but we need a very loud dialogue, very loud cordial argument between two great democracies to put this issue aside and, and, uh, and let's get going and let's help each other. Sanjay, is that something that you agree with that the midterm elections will lead to a change in American attitudes and the, the mood in America will become less anti-outsourcing in the months to come? 
Well, let's go back to why President Obama is yeah. talking about outsourcing. He's a democratically elected president. His, the democratic base is labor unions. His base is African-American community. It's the Hispanic community. The African-American community, the Hispanic community is suffering 20% unemployment, while the rest of the country is suffering 10% unemployment. So he's catering to his base. He needs his base to show up for the elections in order for him to get reelected, in order for the Congress to get reelected. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. The Republicans won. The Republicans have been talking about free trade and open markets and things of that nature. So I think he still will have to play to his base, which is the unions, which is the African American, the Hispanics, who are really getting impacted by this economy. But the message going future for Congress is, free trade, more open markets, etc. That's good news for Indian outsourcing. Absolutely. Let me put that same question to Subroto Bakhti as well. Will Obama's waning clout in Washington see the vilification and the criticism of Indian outsourcing and IT outsourcing per se lessen in the days and weeks to come, Mr. Bakhti? I think uh, it is a matter of concern to us. We, we really don't uh, want to make a statement about uh, the popularity rating of one president or the other. But I think what causes a concern is the kind of impact it would have on bilateral trade, uh, which has to be taken into account when you are looking at issues like bilateral relationships. The two are, you know, are, are, are really joined at the hips. Okay, you're saying that the two issues are joined in the hips, but Mr. Dagger, have all these issues that have cropped up, the interview that President Obama gave yesterday to PTI, the comments on outsourcing, now this NASCOM letter to the American ambassador uh, coming from a very measured body, has it taken the sheen off the visit to some extent? You know, where people believe, okay, we don't really know what Obama is bringing because he seems to be wanting to take more things to, from us than give to us. Yeah, well, President Obama is coming with uh, with close to 200 CEOs in the United States. They they want to uh, they want to trade. They want to they want to sell some things uh, here to India. They want to they want to buy. They want to exchange. So I, I think that uh, as soon as you see the entourage landing and you see that uh, this is a serious uh, presidential visit, this is not some sort of uh, photo op. This is a serious thing. I think that issue will be put to rest, and, and you'll see that America is serious about. Uh, working with India, easing these restrictions, and, and getting uh, getting the economy moving again. Okay, Dr. Mitra, are you confident as well that even though there would be a few irritants, you know, the ambassador gave us an interview in which he called these footnotes in the Indo-US business relationship. He's saying the larger picture still is the things are going very strong and very well. I think you will see that in uh, the same media that is today discussing this understandably with such seriousness as you are doing, you will be completely rushing around the President of the United States on all the other flutter of so many positive processes that will happen at that time. In that huge picture, let's not forget, India has taken over 372 companies in the United States, acquired them, saving many of those jobs <coughs> across states after states. That is the positive a uh, counter statement of a constructive nature to the outsourcing debate. 127 greenfield projects have been taken up by India in the United States. Total of uh, at least 65,000 jobs that we have measured in a study between FIKI and University of Maryland. This is what should come to the table. Mr. President, we are creating jobs by massive investments into your country never seen before in our history. Therefore, 